Hello everyone. Welcome to this second video of a short series for AEC applications and workflows within SimSolid. In the previous video, we explored some different ways that we can import our 3D CAD geometry into SimSolid, some different formats and uh, ways we can work with that. Now we're going to proceed from that point on after we've imported, we now have the geometry and it's important to understand that SimSolid does not require you to have perfect 3D CAD geometry in order to run the analysis. It can handle geometry imperfections and clean those up uh, for you. So in this example, I've imported a steel connection model and it's identified some issues with part overlaps. So there is some uh, integrity issues with our geometry that we've imported. And we have a short blurb here just explaining some of the potential consequences related to that. I'm just going to click OK to close this. And we're brought to this dialogue that explains uh, some of the overlapping parts. So I can just expand them. It looks like there's five different parts that have been uh, exposing or have been uh, producing some overlap. I'll just expand this field here as well so we can see the names. And I can look at the overall magnitudes of overlap. So as we can see here, all these values are less than one millimeter. So they are quite small uh, in the grand scheme of things, but not zero. Uh, but again, SimSolid can handle this quite easily. If we ever want to perhaps study where these are in our model, first of all, we can maybe just look at the model a little bit closer so we know what we're dealing with. But then I could go ahead and I could say, you know what, let's just left click on one of these or multiples and click on this magnifying glass button to find it. So I can click on this button. It's identified here a weld. So this weld actually came from the 3D CAD geometry that we imported. And I can zoom out and see exactly where that is. So that's just on the one side of this plate here. I'm not going to worry about doing anything to that just yet. But what I am going to do is close that dialog and I'm brought to the second step where we can generate our automatic connections. Now this is oftentimes a very useful second step for this process, but I'm going to do things a little differently. I'm going to close this and I'm going to actually generate some welds of my own. So not only can SimSolid import welds from our 3D CAD geometry, but we can also identify and generate welds of our own as well. So I can click on this connections button and start controlling how the different parts in this model are connected to one another. And one of the options is welds. I'm going to use this seam welds button and I can just click on the arrow where I can say, let's create some new seam welds. I can specify my section size, the minimum length of an edge that is going to be applied as uh, seam weld. Uh, so this comes into play if I had, for example, in this case here, I've got some wide flange shapes. I might not necessarily want to weld the edge that is of the, the shorter side of my flange, for example. It's just not worth the, the time or effort, so I don't want to consider that. So I can set this minimum length to be whatever I need it to be. Now the next step would be to identify which parts we want to weld together. And for this one, I'm just going to focus in on uh, a specific set of geometry. However, we have a few different options available. For example, we could select group weld. And if we had named it as such in the 3D CAD file, we can generate uh, basically a, a group of objects that might have the word keyword weld in it, for example. And I can find all those parts. I'm not going to do that right now, but I just wanted to show you that is an option. And it could certainly help speed things up. I'm going to go with the master weld approach, however. So in this situation, I'm going to select the master part, which will be my wide flange column. And I'm going to weld a few parts to that master column. So I'm going to weld this flange of the uh, I-beam here, uh, the web as well, the other flange, and maybe I'll do the same thing on the other side here as well. So we can just weld those parts to it. And once we're ready, I can just click the Find Welds button, and it's going to identify all of the edges that come into contact with this master part and generate welds that they fall, uh, their minimum length is greater than the length that's identified here. So I can zoom in and I can see there's are some, some green and red areas that have uh, basically been applied welds. If I zoom into the top of this flange edge here, we can see that there's no weld along that edge, which is a byproduct of the minimum length I'm using. Now I can obviously go in and revise these if I want to, but I'm just going to click OK. And we can see that they now appear with this green color indicating the presence of those wells. 
And that takes care of the parts that were connected to that master uh, part, in this case, the column that I had. But there are still other parts that I haven't connected yet. And that is by design because I do want to show you the other approach. And this is the one that SimSolid has suggested to us earlier. So I can click on the automatic connections button. And this will allow me to generate automatic connections based off of geometry that's coming into contact with one another or very close to contact. But before I do that, it may also be useful to know that there is this tool that allows us to find and show disconnected groups of parts. So I can click on this button and it will allow me to identify parts that may not be connected to one another. And I'm expecting to see a fairly large number here because I've only generated welds for a few of my parts here. But it's showing me there's 234 connect disconnected groups of parts. And basically, it's a long list, as you can imagine, uh, because we're not done generating our connections. But we can see here this main group is the one that I've basically set up my welds for, and those ones are connected. Everything else is disconnected. So that can be a useful tool when we're getting close to running our analysis, and we just want to double check them. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the automatic connections button. And this is the one that we saw earlier. Here we can specify gap and penetration tolerances. So if the parts are perhaps separated by a small amount or uh, penetrating into one another by a small amount, we can specify our gap and penetration tolerances to be slightly greater than that in order to capture uh, the connection between those objects. Now we don't want to make it too large because that could artificially stiffen our structure. Uh, so we want to make sure that it's fairly close to those um, part overlap uh, quantities or magnitudes that we saw earlier. We can also specify our connection resolution level. The default normal is usually what we'd recommend for most situations. However, if the overall um, contact area is small relative to the overall size of our connecting part, and we can see examples of that here with this large drum connecting to a, a fairly large plate, we have a very small area that's actually in contact relative to the size of the overall part. So I might want to use an increased resolution level, for example, for my connection. And you'll see here, I've also toggled on this option that says connect unwelded parts only. I don't want to create additional connections where I already have welds. And so that's why we're doing this, uh, just to avoid, again, artificially stiffening the structure. And I'll click OK. And SimSolid has identified all the different connections in the model that could exist due to the geometry that we have and the tolerances that I specified. And I'm just going to go to Show All. And we can see here, now we've got this uh, colored uh, connections, I guess you could call it. And there's two different colors aside from the wells that we already looked at. Uh, we have the red connection, which is indicative of a bonded connection, meaning that those parts are essentially sharing all six degrees of freedom so they can transfer translations and moments uh, at those locations. And then if we zoom in here, we also have at our bolt locations uh, a sliding connection. And as you can imagine, that does not transfer or does not share rotational uh, degrees of freedom. So it is allowing it to slide. Uh, and SimSolid has automatically identified the bolts in our model and applied this uh, connection type for us automatically. So we can continue to revise this and we'll see later on in this series uh, additional ways we can consider uh, connection between different parts. So please stay tuned for that video as we move forward.